Welcome to Facebook. I'm Dr. Mary Neal. Thank you for joining me. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Somebody was saying, what else is new? Praise the Lord. Well, I don't know how to get my reader on. And then my one that's pray. I don't know how to get them on. I didn't take time to work it out how to get them on. So, I guess everything is left up to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors which is forgive us of our sins as we forgive everyone that sin against us and lead us not into temptation for temptation is always around us but god always make a way for us to escape but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. O oh, Holy Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. And I bless your holy name. God, I thank you for watching over us this day, allowing us to see another day. God, I thank you for how you protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, I ask you to go throughout this universe, throughout this world, and bless in every area, O oh God. Manifest, make known, O oh God. Heal, raise up from the dead. God, I pray, O oh God, that a word would be spoken from you today that would draw the ungodly unto you, that would draw those who are in Yeshua the Messiah closer to you. Because we know the closer we get to him, the closer we get to you. So, God, I ask you to bless this service in the name of Yahshua. Bless those who are sick. Bless those who are burning down. Bless those who have lost a loved one, God. Comfort their broken heart. And I give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you all once again for those who are joining online or those who are out there on Facebook. We are online. I'm going to go ahead and give the number out. <clears throat> if you're on Facebook, it's out there on the page as well. The dial-in number is 267-807-9601. And the ID is 294-147. So you're welcome to call in. You're welcome to ask questions, but not why I am teaching. Save them until the end because I could lose my focus and I don't want to do that. And so if you have a prayer request or whatever, good to see you, sis. You're on time. I wish you knew how to call your brother, Willie, and both of you all could be on the line at the same time because Sheila is not here and I'm not sure how to switch over. So if you know how to do that, give him a call so he can come in on the line as well. So first of all, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. If we believe on God and we believe that God raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead, then the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, that's Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Out of the heart, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses continue to and forsake, repent, his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sins 
will not prosper. That is the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Well, we are continuing with our study, but <laughs> was so amazing how I came up real late. I decided to try to cook uh, this afternoon, and so I thought I was just going to continue with the verse that we left off with on yesterday morning. But it's amazing how the Lord worked. He just started giving me more information, so of course I just started writing. And so we are going to continue with that subject uh, from yesterday. But then he gave me some other scriptures to go through that deal with the subjects as well. We welcome all as one. Walking it out and dealing with the heart. So the first thing we're going to do, because so many times people come in, maybe on the beginning, maybe on the middle or toward the end, and they miss a lot. Well, sometimes when we do that, we can totally misunderstand certain things. Like, for instance, if I said, uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Well, if a person didn't know that, they may say, well, I thought I was supposed to say a sinner's prayer to be saved. <laughs> and so I always say, if you can find a sinner's prayer in your Bible, please show it to me because it's not scripture. Sinner's prayer, if you want to name a prayer for sinners, that means that is confessing your sin. And so we are to be justified before our, before we try to try to even get in a race. We need to be justified by our faith according to Romans chapter 4 and Romans chapter 5. So we are all as one, or we welcome all as one. In other words, we are to be in that one body the same way God the Father and Yahshua is united as one, but they are not the same. Then make sure I get that. Because like I said before, you know, sometimes people hear me say something, they can misunderstand me and thought I meant something else. So I have to make sure I'm explaining what I am saying. Because one mean many. One mean unity. One mean agreement. And so I guess that's why the Lord led me back to these verses that we are getting example out of John 17, Galatians 3, 28. What is wrong with the people of God? Now that came to me right before I posted out there. And some of this is, uh, I put out there earlier, what we were going to cover is not on there because the Lord kind of brought it to me late this afternoon or tonight. What is wrong with the people of God? I wish someone would just start typing, uh, just tell me. Anybody want to answer, uh, write it out there on Facebook while I'm looking, or if you're on the phone, you can tell me. What is wrong with the people of God? It kind of reminds me, I love this song, uh, oh, what is, I made a vow. And he says to one, what is wrong with you? And so as I'm writing, I came up with, what is wrong with the people of God? Anybody? Nobody talking to me. Well, I'll tell you what came to me right after I asked the question. I was just going to leave it and keep, keep on going. And then I heard in my spirit, you need to answer it since you asked the question. What is wrong with the people of God? The lack of knowledge and understanding of the truth. Unbelief. Not trusting, believing continuously, and the hardness of hearts. And so when I, that came to my spirit, where the spirit of the Lord just took me to Ezekiel to help explain the, what we need. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, and I say we're going to walk it out. That means I'm going kind of slow. Uh, this is from Complete Jewish Bible. You can read from any translation you like. But just be careful with the translation. It's good to read more than one. I will give you a new heart. Well, how many of us know we was born with the old heart? He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit inside you. I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart 
of flesh. Well, when you think about that, if we have that heart, remember one of the things I said because of the hardness of our hearts? Well, if something is hard, like it can't sell anything, right? So he said, I'll take the stony heart out of you and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Well, common sense tells us if we pinch ourselves or someone else, they can feel it. But if it's hard, it's not going to feel anything. So he wants us to have a heart of flesh, a tender heart. A heart that will receive the word, not the word just bouncing off because it's like stone. Other words, if anything like stone, it can't receive because it's too hard. So we need a heart of flesh. As this is my flesh and I pinch myself, I can feel it. So when we have the heart of flesh, we should be able to feel. We should be able to receive what God has in store for us. Hallelujah. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. If you're following me, Ezekiel 19, I am reading from Complete Jewish Bible. And I will give them. Now notice the word before will was what? I will give you. Right? That's single. But now he says in Ezekiel eleven nineteen, I will give them. That's become what? Plural. I will give them. Unity, meaning one, of heart. I will put a new spirit among you. The one, remember the other one, inside of you. This one has to do with among you. I will remove from their bodies the hearts of stone and give them hearts of flesh. Now this verse becomes plural. The first one was single because it says, I will give you. Ezekiel 18.31. Dealing with the heart. Complete Jewish Bible. Throw far away from yourselves all your crimes. That mean transgression. Which mean get rid of it. Throw far away from yourselves. That mean we are to get rid of sin ourselves, which is crime translated transgression. So read it again. So far away from yourselves, all your crime transgression that you committed and make yourself. Now notice, now he's saying make yourself and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, house of Israel? Well, this is back in Ezekiel 18. Well, remember, we said we were going to teach Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 18, and 32 and 34. I'm thinking we haven't gotten there yet. I have taught that a long time ago. But the Lord had placed in my spirit to come back to it, but he hasn't led me into it yet. Now, go to Matthew chapter 3 and 8. Complete Jewish Bible. If you have really turned from your sins, notice that. Because we can say, I turned away from my sins. But here he says, if, if casts doubt. If you have really turned from your sins to God, produce fruit that will prove it. But how many times we say, well, I have turned away from my sins, but we're not producing Godly fruit. So it says, if you have really turned from your sin to God, produce fruit that will prove it. You know, sometimes we say, well, I love the Lord with all my heart. And sometimes people may say to us, prove it. Or sometimes people may say, I love you with all my heart. And they might say to you, I can't tell. Prove it. A husband and a wife may say the same thing. Honey, I love you. Or darling, I love you with all my heart. And they might say, well, I can't tell. You're not proving it. And so the Lord wants us to prove it by our action. 
King James Version, the same uh, chapter and verse, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 4. This is from King James. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which tries our hearts. i read that again. It's worth reading again. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our heart. So that's why we're dealing with these scriptures that deal with the heart, because sometimes people do not realize because you're in the family of God, you're going to be tried to see if you're going to abide in the family of God. Because you believe Yahshua Jesus, if you do, is the son of God, you're going to be tried to see if you're going to continue to believe. How do we know? Well, we keep studying the word of God. In Revelation 3 and 3, Complete Jewish Bible. So remember what you received and heart. Notice. So remember what you received. That means you have received it and heard. You have heard it and obey it. In other words, don't just receive it and you heard it, but obey it. And turn from your sins. For if you don't wake up, I will come like a thief. And you don't know at what moment I will come upon you. Well, that's not for ungodly people. That's for the Lord's people. These are God's people. And this is Yahshua teaching here. Read it again. So remember what you received and heard and obey it. And turn from your sin. For if you don't, I'll, uh, if you don't wake up, remember the scripture says, high time to wake out of our sleep. For now, our final deliverance, which means salvation, is nearer than when we believe. And then there's a scripture says, awake him that sleepeth. That means darkness. When we are asleep, we can't see, just like a natural sleep. You don't know what's going on around you because you're asleep. When we're like sleep in the spirit, we don't know what's really going on, uh, Satan, what Satan trying to do to us, because we are walking in darkness. We are not walking in the light, and therefore we stumble. So remember what you received and heard and obey it and turn from your sin. For if you don't wake up, I will come, that's Yeshua Jesus, like a thief. And you don't know at what moment I will come upon you. Well, we also know he won those disciples. The same thing. He won them and the disciples wanted to know what he was saying. If the good man had known that the thief was coming, he would not have suffered his house to be robbed. So the disciples wanted to know was that for them or for all? So he said it wasn't just for them, but it's for all. It's for us as well. Remember what he said. Think not. Now I'll go back into the verse later. If I don't get there tonight, praise God, it may be Monday night. Or no, Sunday morning or Monday night. Think not that I'm come to send peace. This is where people misunderstand Yeshua Jesus. They think he just came to die for their sin. They think he just came to bring peace. They think he just came for one reason. Why did I, Why did he come? Oh, he came to die for my sin. And that's what 99% of believers seem like. That's the only thing they know. But listen what he said. Think not. In other words, don't even think it. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace. This is your Lord and Savior, so we say, Yeshua Jesus. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But remember, his word is like a double-edged sword. So his word came to what? To try us. Yes, when he first came, he came to die for the world. But now he said he got, came to send a sword. He didn't come to send peace. Psalm 112 and verse 7. Psalms 112 verse 7, complete Jewish Bible. He will not be frightened by bad news. He remains steady. Trusting in Adonai. Notice that. 
He remains steady. Remember the Bible says we are to be rooted, grounded, unmovable. So this has to do, he will not be frightened by bad news. He remains. So in order to remain steady, that means we was being steady, but we need to remain steady, unmovable. So it says he remains steady, trusting in Adonai. Well, when you see that word Adonai again, that can be God the Father or the Lord Yeshua because both was called Lord again and both is called Adonai. And I always have to give that example where David said, My Lord said unto my Lord, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemy a footstool for your feet. That's in there, I think, like four times. In other words, God said to his son, Yeshua the Messiah, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. So both again, it's called Lord, both is called Adonai. We welcome all as one, walking it out. In John 17, 21, and many times when I'm speaking about unity, I always use this verse, but I said, what's wrong with God's people? So the Lord placed this in my spirit to go back here in John 17, but we need to study John chapter number 17, but I'm reading 17, 21. That they may, right there, is a pause. That they may, not that they will, not that they shall, but that they may all be one. That's why I said we welcome all as one. Just as you, Father, are united with me, and Jewish Bible, dealing with this word one and how we are to be one. In Galatians 3.28, complete Jewish Bible, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor freeman, neither male nor female, for in union with the Messiah, Yeshua, Christ, Jesus, you are all one. While to understand that word one, it means we are in one body. Demands of us. Uh, this is portion number four. Now I'm getting back in where we stopped on yesterday, but the Spirit gave me some other uh, information to go along with that. So this is uh, portion four from yesterday morning. Be careful and alert, although I did not use that yesterday morning, but this came to my spirit this afternoon. Be careful and alert. Satan and his deceitful spirits. And if you see it out there on the video, I have it all complete perfect awareness. Well, I have been asking people to do this now. I think this is probably number four of teaching because what I want people to do to start highlighting in case you do not, using bold letters in case you do not, using something to cause you to focus, cause you to pause, cause you to stop and really meditate on the Word of God. You know, we are to meditate on His Word day and night. Sometimes we read it, but we do not meditate. We should sit on throne, even as I overcame and sit with my Father on His throne. He that overcometh. Those are powerful chapter. Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3. If you have not studied those chapters, study them. Now, since my phone was turning, I'm going to read this again. Let me go back up a little bit. The devil is a lie. Standing firm in my trust faith. How can one be sure that they have God as their father? And is victoriously overcoming the world. I didn't say overcome. Overcoming that processing. Overcoming the world. If one does not continue to believe in the world. The world is overcoming us. 
Now, if you think I'm wrong, you just go to 1 John chapter 5, complete Jewish Bible, or any translation you want to read. Who does overcome the world? If not the person who believes, that means continue to believe, trusts, that means continue to trust, what? Believe, trust, what? That Yahshua Jesus is the Son of God. That one, uh, 1 John 1, 5, but study that chapter. So when people walking around here saying, oh, I have overcame the world, but they are trusting the wrong thing, yeah, is the Son of God. Now I'm reading 1 John 5 through 9, King James Version. If we receive the witness of men, and that's what many of us are doing, the witness of God is greater. I did go through this verse, uh, I think it was last Monday. I do not think I covered it Sunday. I cannot remember, but I'm going to read from two translations. If we, notice the word is if, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of that chapter, he that overcometh. <clears throat> so many times, we're not overcoming the world because we are asleep. We're not awake. I read this verse yesterday. And it is so powerful. I'm reading it again today because we are online as well. And this is what many people are doing out there. They're not even thinking. they just making everybody pastor, everybody minister, everybody apostle. And, and they're just laying hand on people. But let me say this. If God did not call or in reinstating expel offenders and thereby share in the sins of others. In other words, if we do that, it's a sin. And we are sharing in the sin of others. Keep yourselves free from sin. That's First Timothy again, 5.22 AMP. I have people coming on Facebook and calling me, messaging me, telling me uh, they want to be part of the ministry and I have asked someone if I would ordain them. They, I'm like, no, I'm not a fool. I don't know nothing about you and I'm going to ordain you and make you part of like I said, I've been going through these verses for quite some time now. The devil is alive. My phone keep turning. If it keeps stopping, if the Lord's will, I'll do it all over again. Maybe tomorrow or maybe Sunday because we know the devil came to rob, steal, and destroy. And he does not want people to know or hear or receive the truth. These are the focus studies of verses that we've been using now for probably two months. 2 John 1, 9, 11. Everyone who goes ahead and does not remain true to what the Messiah Christ has taught. I hear you again in this subject. When yesterday it came to my spirit uh, where the young man was saying, I have told you, would you want to hear it? Do you want to hear it again? And so they heard it, but they wanted to know more about that subject. Well, sometimes when we read a verse, we do not continue to read, and this is how we can misunderstand it. We don't get enough information so it can make it clear to us. You can take a verse out of the Bible, and it may seem a certain way, but if you're not reading the chapter, you can really miss it. And sometimes you, gotta, you need to read the one before and the one after. As I said, if it's in John 3.16, if you don't read the whole chapter, why? Uh, let me, no. Who does overcome the world if not the person who believes? So the Bible tells us who overcome the world. So if anybody say I overcome the world and they not continue trusting the report, no, they have not. Because the Bible asks, who does overcome the world 
if not the person who believes not believe, which means trusts, continue to, that Yeshua Jesus is the Son of God. Again, that's verse John 1, 5. So this is how we overcome when we continue to believe. Now I'm reading a few more verses here. Everyone who believes that Yeshua is the Messiah has God as his Father. And everyone who loves is so is that because everything which has God as its Father overcomes the world. And this is what victoriously overcomes the world, our trust, meaning our faith. Who does overcome the world if not the person who believed that Yeshua Jesus is the Son of God? So if a person doesn't believe Yeshua Jesus is the Son of God, they have not overcame the world. That's what makes people worldly. He is the one who, that's Yeshua Jesus, read. He is the one who came by mean of water and blood. Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, read. Not with water only, but with water and the blood. And because it is the witness which God has given about his son. Uh, 2 John 1 through 3, I think I'm reading. The chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not only I, but also all who have come to know the truth. Now, I'll read that again. To the chosen lady and her children. Remember, we're called, we're chosen, and we're to be what? Faithful. So this is written to the chosen lady. Now, if you look at some translate uh, translation, they do, they say they don't know if it's speaking of a lady or speaking of the church. It's speaking to about everyone. The chosen lady and her children, whom I love. Let's read it again. Grace, mercy, and shalom, meaning peace, will be with us, with them, from God the Father and from Yeshua the Messiah, which is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. So what they wrote is what? True. Now we say that is not true. Who witness are we to believe? What's written down in scripture or what's on line spirit said? Them that sin rebuke before all that others owe. Titus 2.15. These are the things you should say. Encourage and rebuke with full authority. Don't let anyone look down on you. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Timothy 5.19. Not sure if I'm going. But if you study that, uh, study 1 Timothy chapter 5, focus 19 through 25, King James Version. Again, an elder, against an elder received not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Well, remember, everything established by two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Complete Jewish Bible 21. I charge the blue. That you guard and keep these rules without bias, doing nothing out of favoritism. So what I did was on yesterday morning taping, I broke it down. Number one, before God. Number two, the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, the elect angels. First Timothy 5.22. Again, lay hands certainly on no one, neither be partakers of other man's sin. Keep thyself pure. Now here, uh, I charge you in the presence of God, Jesus Christ, and of his chosen angel guard. Oh, this is going into something. Oh, Jesus, they are the one within. 
And those are the ones that Yeshua is going to judge. Those are the ones the Bible tells us to judge as well. That's why I say go to judgment with brothers. That in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But this verse is coming out of 1 Corinthians 5.13. God alone uh, sit in judgment on those who are outside the faith. Remove the wicked one from among you. Expel him from your church. Other words, if people in church and they are wicked... The Bible says you ought to put them out. Why? That other people might fear because if they say they get them to say that they knew he was the Messiah. Now, this is Luke 9, 926 AMP. I'm reading. For whoever is ashamed here and now of me, read, that's Jesus, Yeshua, and my word. Well, I just think about that. Many people do not realize. When we are ashamed of him and his word, listen what he said. For whosoever is ashamed here and now of me and my words, the son of man, okay, the son is red, dark blue, that's speaking of God, the son of God. The son of me, red, that's speaking of Yeshua, Jesus. For if, anyone, if someone is ashamed of me and of what I say, the Son, all that is red, of man, the Son of God, will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, that Yeshua, when he comes in the glory, and that of the Father and of the Holy Angel. Three again, Matthew 10, 30, 34, King James Version. That's Matthew 10, I'm reading different chapters and different verses. This in heaven. And then he says something very important that I used just that phrase earlier. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. What is he talking about, people? When you continue to study that in Luke, he's going to tell us how if a father loved his child more than he loved him, and when one loves the mother more than they love him, they are not worthy of him. So that's why he came, he, he came to try us. He did not just die for our sins. It's 99 percent seem like a people believe. He came for many reasons. He came to he said red. In the present of blue. My red father in heaven. So you see that again. But whosoever disowned me, red. Before others, I will disown, that's Yeshua Jesus, before my red Father in heaven. Blue. That's how we can really separate words so we really can understand. So that's why I said bring highlighters <coughs> or on your computer, uh, underline, uh, do bold letters. And they kind of just kind of like, like a stop sign, like, wait a minute. These are not the same. These are different. If you acknowledge, therefore the one who confess and acknowledge me before men as Lord and Savior. Now, they added Lord and Savior. Affirming a state of oneness with me. See that one mean one. That one. I will also confess and acknowledge before my red father who is in heaven blue. But the one who denies and rejects me, red, that's your sure Jesus, before men, that one, I will also, that's your sure Jesus, deny and reject before my red. That means those who believe and those who do not believe. He will receive and welcome you. Receive, wait a minute. He, I'm sorry. He who receives and welcomes you. That's what he was telling to those disciples. He who receive and welcomes you. Receives me. And he who receives me. Receives him who sent me. Now there it is again. You see three. He who receives, see my phone go in and out that many times. So that tells me 
The devil does not want this word to go forth. But when I check the video, if it went crazy too many times, I will, by the grace of God, do it over again. Because Paul says, the devil can hinder us. Praise God, he can't stop us. So he said, it's trending again, those who, if anybody online. Well, if no one is online, once again, if you have any questions or comment, go write them right out there on Facebook. If anybody wants this teaching, I will post the whole thing out there. You can go through it yourself, but it will not have the different colors unless I put it in a different document where it would actually show the colors as my back wall does. <clears throat> Amen. So we have anybody out there that has not been adopted in the family of God. The Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. That we believe he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. So can someone tell me, has that video been turning the whole time in and out, in and out? Because sometimes it does that, but it still records. But I'll go back and check it out myself. Thank you all. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining me. Father, I come right now in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you, God, for any opportunity to open my mouth and let you speak for me. For your word, because your word is true. And you tell us to obey your truth, to walk out your truth, that you have no greater joy than to hear that we are walking out the truth. So God, I pray that the word was a blessing to everyone. Those who maybe could not uh, understand, did not receive it. God, give them a hunger and thirst after your word. Give them a hunger and thirst after righteousness and they can be filled. God, I pray that you fill us with your spirit, that you fill us, oh God, with us, your spirit, that we run over on someone else, that we become life changers. Because Yeshua command us to be the light of the world, that man would see our good work and glorify you, Father, in heaven. God, I thank you for manifesting your son to me. I thank you for your son teaching me about who you are. And God, I just bless you. I love you. I give you praise, honor, and glory. And I ask you to bless each and every person out there. Wherever they stand in need of God, bless them. Give us a spiritual blessing, number one. Because we could be rich as that man was rich, but he was poor in spirit. So God, help us to be rich in our spirit, oh God. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. And I bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for joining me. The blessing of the Lord rest upon you for the rest of your days. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for holding the line, sis. I'm 